Vince here, and here we have another day on the cheapest Rolls Royce in the UK. So I'm not really sure what I'm going to do in this one today. It's unbelievably hot, but lots of spares have arrived. So I've got my flying spares box there. So that means I should have the new little washer valves and stuff in that one there. Also, I should have the fill-in loop to be able to fill up the hydraulic suspension and brakes. So I'm looking forward to giving that a go. Also in there, my wiper arm has arrived. I haven't opened it up yet. I presume it's in there. So I think to begin with, just off camera because I don't want to spend any more time on the washer system on camera because I spent so long on it already. I'm going to uh, just change out this thing here. I'm going to put the new surround on and uh, put the new valve at the bottom there and also put the new wiper arm on. I might try to get the wipers working today because something's not quite right with them. I had a look at the workshop manual and you see it doesn't go into the breakdown of the actual, it's, you know, it shows you the electrical diagram, but the problem I've got is it's been tampered with. The actual mechanism's been tampered with, and I found a part in the boot that looks like it's from, well, I found it in the engine bay, but I've put it in the boot. It looks like it's from the wiper mechanism, but of course I haven't got one to compare to, so I may spend a bit of time on that. I'm not too sure, but uh, yeah, I'm just gonna knock out a couple of jobs now, and then we'll pick up the filming afterwards, and, uh, yeah, maybe we can, maybe I'll start filming when I do the hydraulic filling up of the, the uh, suspension and brakes because I'm quite curious about how that works. So I will be back in a little while. So here we have my little box of spares here and this little box here cost over £100 and the liquid only made up 10% of that. The filler tube was really good value, £1.60 or something. It's stuff like this that just cost a fortune. That one in particular, that was 30 something pounds. So that's that washer, uh, the, the T-valve thing. But this one, now that it's come through, I was expecting it to look like the old one. Now it does look to be 10 millimeters, so that's all good, but that does look to be similar ones to uh, Volvo ones online. So maybe I could have probably got it for half the price, but still, that's what it is. So uh, yeah, it does come in little Bentley bags. So <laughs> maybe I've paid for that. So I'm just going to fit all this stuff here. You can see I've got a new washer jet there. I've also got a new uh, one, you know, for the bumper here. So I'm going to fit all that and then, uh, yeah, let's see if it's working. I'm going to pop the wiper on as well. But what I'm looking forward to is filling up with hydraulic fluid, see if it drinks it all. All right, good news. It's all going together nicely. So I've got the two proper Rolls Royce ones back on here now, one replacement and one original one. And I've done all the uh, connecting up for the pipe work down under here and good news is it's not leaking whatsoever so if I had the original parts to begin with I would have saved myself so much time so you can see there we've got it there so now I think what I'm going to do is the uh, the T valve though that's still nothing compared to what it was originally you know it's much smaller but if it works it works so I'm going to turn my attention now to the windscreen wiper mechanism here so I've got the keys in my pocket and I've got the kill battery kill switch in the boot so there's no danger of this turning on so to begin with what I've done is I've just greased up with some white lithium grease the points here here and also the mechanism here so every place where there's a moving part you can see it wiggling around the place I've done a little bit of uh, white grease so now I've got the wipers off at the moment so I can't show you but what was happening was I wasn't getting a full sweep and then towards the end that wasn't moving whatsoever because the splines on this one here if you have a look I'll show you on the close one it's basically got little splines going down it and those splines need to marry up with the splines in the actual wiper now this one here I believe is okay it looks pretty smooth in here though but when it comes to this one it's gone completely smooth so I've had to buy a new wiper arm, well a used wiper arm. So, uh, but even if you forget about that, that's a simple fix. The problem I've got is the wipe isn't full. So originally I was concerned because when they're in the park position, they're down here, which is good. But when they're in a use, like intermittent, they're kind of this much up the uh, windscreen. But I've watched a video and on another working one, they're that much up the windscreen. So I think when they're in the use, they're here. And when they go to park, they go down to here. But my problem was I wasn't getting a full sweep. It was only going to around about here. 
yeah so it was just doing that to there that to there and i think it needs to cover more of the windscreen maybe not just for the mot but you know for when you're using the car you don't want to have something where you have all rain drops down this side here so you can't see out that side also there was a big gap in the middle here that wasn't being covered at all because the throw on that one wasn't going far enough so uh I wasn't sure when I did the video what's what, but look, you can definitely see that this is done incorrectly here. And this has been left too long because when I bought the car, the, the cover was off it completely. So if they couldn't even be bothered to grind down the bolt, it says to me they don't really know what's going on. Now, luckily, when I was cleaning up, I found this stuck down there somewhere. So now I don't know how the mechanism works, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this apart here and then have a look and see if we can maybe work out what's what. Maybe I'm not getting the full throw because there's way too much play in here it could be as simple as that so let's uh, undo these bolts and see what's happening it's quite nice because they've used two bolts here so this fully locks it into place so there's no danger of that coming undone well, it looks like 10 millimeter bolts have been used And while I'm bent over in front of the camera, let's give a shout out to them, my mate Vince Massive. And this month they consist of kitdigital.com, Kip Hakes, Max Rokotansky, Having Fun Repairs, Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service, Will McAdis, Chris Seal, Felipe at MrKeebs.com, King Curd from Lobo Auto Sales, DJVG, Stuart Park, Ellis Garbutt, Pixie, the My Mate Vince Fan Club, Braden Butts from Connecticut, Kenneth Blenstrup Sorensen, Simba Tinabu, Gabe McCandless, and Extrem 401. As always, Massive thanks to each and every one of you and all the rest of my patrons. Thank you so much. Right, well, that's definitely original, this part here, because it's like some sort of off centered circle bit and also there's a cutout there i'm not quite sure what the cutout is for though but it has to mean something right so right now that's not making any sense to me now is this part off this i wonder this also fits here you see that hole here also fits perfectly on here it does look like there's wear on the top here. Would that signify anything? Ah, and the bottom has two holes as well, similar to this. Again, I don't know what that means. I can't see what that notch is doing. Because now we've got the washer on it, it's filled it up completely. You know, if the notch is not on there, I get it, because then it, it goes into the groove here. You know, this little groove here. Unless I wonder, has that notch broken? And it should be bigger. This thing here, I wonder, should it be sticking up more so it goes through the washer and that other notch? Because when I put that there, you can see now it's completely filled up. So if you had another one, you could just copy it, but I haven't. Ah, look here. Can you see this looks like it should be on a spring? And that's supposed to lock into there, isn't it? I think this is seized up. There you go, that should be in there. Right, let's take this down and let's do this on the floor. I think that's seized up. How that's going to affect the throw, I don't know, but it looks like that needs to lock into there. So in which case then, the notch has nothing to do with, with this bit here. So that does need to fit on there like so. Don't know why we have a hole here and here though. What do they have to do with? Not sure. Let's bring it down and see if we can work out what's going on. Right now, so we have something here. 
that I presume should fit nicely into here and yet when I took it off it was stuck all the way over here and you can see it's still stuck there so that spring's no longer doing its job so this is supposed to spin ah so you see it's not even supposed to spin round anyway ah okay ah but this does spin round it's this that's supposed to go oblong because this is going to be fixed here so it's, it's the actual wiper itself so that is what's given the wiper the movement very little movement we're only going from there to there unless i've read this completely wrong no but saying that the arm itself is going to be moving around the whole you know the whole arm on the uh, on the motor is going to be moving around right okay i'll be honest with you i don't understand it but at least i know now that this does fit onto the actual uh car side of it not this side of it just a bit confused while we've got these kind of big grooves and stuff what are they for so it definitely goes on that way because it doesn't fit that side does it no it doesn't i don't think that's right i think it's this way around ah one second, this doesn't move on the actual car, so it's doing the movement, all the movement's happening between here and here. Yeah, and I suppose that's why it's so worn. Still don't get though, is there supposed to be something in here? Like spring clips coming down. Okay, well I think we free up this here to begin with. So I use WD-40, but then I will grease it up afterwards. There we go, look at that, it's already starting to go. <laughs> look. And we've got a flat spot here. Yeah, so it's flat there, then it locks in there. Just using the little brattle that I found in the car engine. Oh, I didn't realise that this thing spins round. Right, so I suppose it's kind of acting as a ball joint, isn't it? It's just got full movement here, and we can also spin it around this way as well when we move this out of the way. So the motor's going to have a lot more force than me. So you can see now when I go around here, that is fully against it, and then we go to the flat spot a bit more, and then clicks into place. So I think that's going to be pretty free now. So I can put white lithium grease all the way around that. I think what we should do is put it back together and actually see it in motion and then it might become crystal clear how it actually works so i'll probably just reuse the bolt that they've i wonder do we need to fill it up completely well mind you it has to be yeah no that is the right size so we'll reuse this one and then what i'll do is i'll cut it down to uh, the correct height let's get this back in the car Now pay attention to this next bit here because what I do ends up causing me hours of extra hunting. You won't be able to see anything because my torso is in the way because I'm such a good filmer. But you will be able to 
hear the sound of that massive washer that I found in the engine compartment returning to the engine compartment. <laughs> the sound of it now is still putting shudders down my spine. Listen. Annoyingly, I've dropped that thing now, so that's probably going to take an hour to find. Well, that's massively unfortunate. I'm looking everywhere for it. I've had these on so long, the sweat from my face is getting in my eyes <laughs> and stinging. Uh, the weird thing is, I heard it drop a long distance. It sounded like it landed on the floor, but uh, I can't find it anywhere. And that's not the only bolt I've dropped. About a week or so ago, I dropped another bolt down in that area and I can't find that either. So, there's no point in putting that windscreen mechanism back together, the wiper mechanism, because it's just gonna do what it did before. I need that part there to lock in that bottom section. So I'm gonna uh, keep on looking. I mean, I'm sure it will turn up eventually when I get underneath there to clean everything. But I'll give it about another 20 minutes or so, if not, I think I'm just going to have to move on to uh, something else. Right, I think there's more to this than meets the eye. So, I've been looking down here for my big bolt, and I noticed a little black thing with a spring coming out of it. And I reached in carefully, and I grabbed it, it was down deep in there. And look at this thing here. And I'm not saying it does belong to here, but look at that. It's the perfect fit there, isn't it? So... I think maybe there's one for here, and there's one for here, and they're supposed to, supposed to, or do you know what, it more than likely is supposed to be this way round, and they're supposed to travel in the grooves of that other part that has now gone missing. So even if I find this one here, I'm not gonna find that one, am I? And the chances of me finding the one that I've lost is still very slim. So, ah, uh, oh, that's really irritating, I've got a feeling, you have to buy the whole mechanism here for about 220 pound and that's on ebay i'll have a, another look see if there's other ones selling it for maybe the bentley 8 but uh that's really irritating because you see the motor and everything's fine i just need the plates that go around here but i'm not going to be able to buy them separately i'm nearly 100 percent sure of that so i think i might be wasting my time because even if i find that bit there it's still not going to work because what does that one do there you know Oh man, this is ridiculous. Another half an hour's whiz by. So I've jacked the car up. Obviously I'm not going underneath it. It's only a two ton jack, but to be fair, the car is heavier than two tons, but not in that one area. There's other weight spread around the place, but I'm not going under it anyway. It's just to jack it up to try to get more room. So what I'm resorting to now is trying to mimic what may have happened. So I've got string and I've got a load of washers and I'm just dropping them down just to see if I can find out where it might have dropped to, yeah? and then I might have a, a clue of where to, uh, where to look. It's a real shame. Okay, another 45 minutes or so has disappeared and the only time I can't find this washer where it goes to is there's like an empty kind of cavity in here and I can hear it's making nice hollow sounds but uh, it's, not, uh, it's not coming out the other end. Now, I'm not sure what is under here it's very oily and very greasy but i'm wondering whether this plate comes off and then it's going to give me access to three decades worth of drop screws and stuff so i've got one more screw to undo and then we can find out where it goes to let's see if i can do it by hand this is filthy here anyway so i've got a feeling something's leaking good and proper in here so really i need to uh, i need to get in there anyway Okay, let me just put this screw nice and safely to one side. You can see that there's about 20 screws going around the edge here. Here goes. Is it going to come undone? No. Is there more? Oh god, there's another one. Hold on, bear with me. Right, okay, there was one more. So now let's see. What's going to happen in here?
Yes, I can see a screw. I can see a bolt. Maybe there's more under there. Now, it's still not wanting to come out. Bear with me, I'm just gonna put the camera down. I think there's another screw or bolt holding it up here. All right, annoyingly, there's two more bolts just up in here that I can't get to because the exhaust is in the way. That's the exhaust there, but uh, the brown lump of rust in whatever. Now, interestingly, this up here looks like something to do with the hydraulics or the braking. And I can see it's leaking here. There's definitely what looks like fresh hydraulic fluid just here. So when I put my glove on it and I look at my glove, my glove's all sticky. So that's good because at least this part here is accessible, kind of accessible, not easy, but it is gonna be accessible. And good news is it all looks immaculate. Well, okay, not immaculate, it's covered in uh, hydraulic fluid, but it looks clean and nice. It doesn't look heavily corroded, which is fantastic. Now, good news is I did find one of my bolts here. Can you see here and here? I found that. I found this as well. So now I just got to reach up inside. It has to be, it has to be up here somewhere because there's, there's nowhere else it can be. So let me have a feel up inside here. Right, I found my string. So come on, surely you have to be up here. Come on, don't do this to me. You're not here. Oh my word, where are you? How annoying is that? I found my other bolts, but not that one. Oh well, okay, I'm gonna keep on searching. Right, I still haven't found that wash up, but I full on found the leak, watch this. Right, now, under here, we have one uh, accelerator cable, hold on, pedal. So I'm up in this compartment here now, and I can feel the accelerator on the right hand side, and I can feel the brake here uh, further away from me. So uh, right, that's the right, that's the accelerator, this is a brake. Now watch this, when I do the brake, we have fresh, you can see this moving here, and we have fresh, fluid leaking out here. Fresh green fluid dripping down, look at that. Every time I press the brake, 100% this is where the leak is. And that's why we've got this horrible uh, constant wet mark along this area here. So I'm hoping that's the only hydraulic leak we have, hydraulic fluid leak for the brakes there. Obviously this car has hydraulic as well for the suspension. So I think the front brakes it is on its own circuit and then I think the back brakes and the hydraulics are linked because this only has hydraulics on the back but 100% this is leaking here and it looks like it's leaking through the seal there so maybe now that I know the location of this thing I can work out what it is and then well I know it's something to do with the braking and then I might be able to buy a kit you might well be able to buy some seal kit for it to fix it up which would be amazing but I've definitely now seen look at this here fresh green hydraulic fluid coming out so I'm not even going to fill it up because what's the point of filling it up it's only going to leak out here and that's why it's so messy here so I feel that that is fantastic that we worked that out well I've been cleaning underneath there I still can't find the washer anywhere which is amazing considering it's this big I can understand when you're trying to find a tiny screw when you're working on a little mechanical watch but this is just ridiculous I've uh, I found everything else you know but not the one main thing I'm looking for. But the good news is inadvertently I have found where one of the brake leaks, stroke hydraulic leaks are. If uh, there might well be more or you never know, there might not be any more because that's quite a heavy leak coming from there. What I've done is I've cleaned the whole inside of this now. You can see it's gleaming nice and silvery again, which is good. And I've cleaned most of underneath it. So uh, I'm just gonna put a couple of screws in here just to keep the dirt from out of this area up here. And now I need to find out, read up all about this mechanism up here and find out, can you buy new seals for it or do you have to replace it in as a, a whole unit? Hopefully it's not a whole unit. Hopefully you can buy like a seal kit for it, but I really don't know yet. I just wish I could find that washer because then you see, I could test the wipers to see if they're all working. I'm in limbo at the moment. Yeah, I think I'm going to call it a day. I don't really know what else to do today. It feels like I've got a lot of jobs outstanding now. 
but the good news is although I can't show you it working because I haven't even tested it yet we definitely haven't got any leaks in this area now so the water side of things is holding its own which is fantastic and at least now I've got the proper parts which is good so that should be working fine so uh, yeah I'm gonna pick this up again another day now you're not gonna believe this so you know the problem I was having with the washout I said I'll never be able to get one of them people will only be selling the whole thing in its entirety which was gonna be over 200 pounds well this is just unbelievable I have been searching lots on eBay and as and when things come up I buy it so for example here we have the boot cover on the inside I hope this is the one for my model. This is from a Bentley 8 again, but from a similar year. So hopefully that will fit, uh, you know, that covers up the boot lock and stuff. And I have my internal light. And the same seller, I just can't believe this. The same seller was selling this. This is the arm that I'm looking for. It's missing the end bit, so maybe I'll be able to swap them over. Or if not, I'll have to carefully, really carefully try to undo this and then... Uh, get it onto the one that I've got. I mean, I'm not exactly sure if it's the same yet, but maybe I'll be able to take the components from here and make up one if it's not the same. But if I don't have to take it apart, I'd be quite uh, I'd be quite happy. But it looks like it goes around freely and then watch this. Watch. Boom, clicks into place there. So I'm wondering whether all that spring mechanism was just purely so the wipers know where to finish off so they kind of click into place and maybe so they're not loose i don't know still not 100 percent sure but i think that's what it's for so you can turn that way completely freely without doing anything yeah without moving this one but when we go this way around it turns the whole thing it'll probably make more sense when i actually have it in the car but uh, yeah i can't believe it and guess how much i paid for it that one there i think do you know what i think that was up for 12 pound i offered 10 pound got it for 11 and then this one i think was up for 13 off for 10 and i said that i've just bought that one and then they accepted it 10 pound for that it's not worth messing is it it's not worth messing trying to make up a mechanism when i got that for 10. i feel so 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 lucky because that there was causing me such heartache so now what i'm going to do is take this one off from here compare them both and hopefully it'd be a case of making one good one out of two of them and what i've done is if i turn it on here to run and do the wiper switch which is just down here so we've got slow fast and lows of intermediate speeds as well but look if i put it onto slow you can see that it does when i turn it off now hold on one second slow and off it goes to that position there so that must be like the off position if i go to fast and then off again it stops at that position so i'm going to turn off turn it off at that position there and that's going to be my kind of off position when the wipers are in the park position right luckily they do look to be the same this is opposite but they do look to be the same so i think rather than trying to struggle trying to get this kind of plastic let's call it a socket i think it's plastic yeah that's plastic uh rather than trying to struggle getting that into there if the arms look the same which they do everything looks exactly the same why don't i just pop this off and pop this one into here That's not going to come out there, is it? Why is this one back to front compared to that one? Right. Uh, that ain't going to come out there, not at all. Right, okay. Let's see if I can remove this thing from here. can't see how that's going to come in or out either. Hmm. Maybe I'll have to undo all the bolts. Yeah, looking at the car, unfortunately, the arm's different as well. But maybe it's not going to make any difference. See, this is the arm that's here at the moment. This is this arm. But look, I think it should still, it should still work, shouldn't it? If it goes all the way over there, I just need to get that end bit off. It's a real shame that that end bit's not included. See, that side's not going to crush to come out. But I wonder would I be able to crush this side to uh, get it out. Do you know what? I don't think that's going to come out. It 
So it's hard to do clockwise and it's easy to do counterclockwise, anti-clockwise. So I'm worried if I swap it over to this mechanism that uh, A, it's going to spring out everywhere and secondly, this is back to front. Well, I think I'm going to have to swap them over because uh, yeah, I thought it'd be the same, but they're not. Right, I need to undo this bolt here. Unfortunately, when I go on it, it just spins this round, so I'm going to have to put the screwdriver in here so it hits against here. That should allow me to undo it. But I've got to be really careful not to drop anything down into this engine compartment. I'm not going through that again. Excellent, right, I got that off. And that's splined as well. Okay, so it's splined and a nut holding it on. And it goes on that way, going up, up towards the bonnet. Now I've got to be really careful it doesn't spring out everywhere. So I'm just gonna hold it with my fingers. That's that. Does this unscrew? Right, this now unscrews. Okay, we're off, we're off, we're off. Right, excellent. Ah, look. So we have that thing that we've seen before that springs out, but look, can we, we also got some sort of little ball bearing thing going on. Don't spring out, don't spring out now. Be good, be good, be good. There we go, excellent. There, now, we've got this thing here. So now we're at this level, are we not? Because this thing, uh-oh, 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 this is different than this. Ah, we've got a problem. We have got a problem. Right, in a later episode, when I was looking through the burner phone bin i did find a bolt that looked like that we got a problem now you see because we need to use this one on here but i don't think that this fits on the actual car because the hole's too big right so this was the thing i found in the uh, burner phone box but look can you see it's much shorter so that's what's happened this has snapped off isn't it so this isn't going to reach through here now yeah can you see there there's not going to be enough to grip onto because once that goes onto here. Oh, also, this is round and this is square. Now, that's not going to work. Right, let's have a look at the car and see if there's a way that this is going to fit on the same as this because to me, the holes look different. Okay, so this is the original one. And when I push that down, it goes to the top of the kind of uh, spline bit. Well, to be fair, that's only a, a fraction of a millimetre lower, and the spline bit does go at an angle, so I think that will actually work. I wonder whether this is going to be too high. Thought it'd be the same part, you see. Okay, well, that is good news. So, in this bit here, what I'm doing is I'm transferring the working bits onto my original part that was broken. So the little spring, the little weird cylinder bearing thing, and the washers and the actual bolts and stuff off the replacement eBay one. But bearing in mind that if you have a look 
where the kind of catch on a spring is on the eBay one it's at the bottom there and on my one it's at the top and uh, I think that proves to be quite important but anyway let me just fast forward through this bit and then you can see it sort of together at the end I'm going to watch back the video and see if it's like that. Right, so watching it back, it was hard to do clockwise, easy to do anti-clockwise. Fantastic, yeah, easy clockwise and harder anti-clockwise. God, Vince from the future just jumping in here while I'm editing the video. I'd only just said that it was hard to do clockwise and easy to do anti-clockwise, and then I go and do the exact opposite and think I'm correct. I don't know whether it's hay fever, just getting over COVID, or the sun, but my brain is definitely not working correct while I'm fin filming this uh, video. So basically, let me just quickly recap. Originally, because this is important, it was hard to do clockwise, it turned the whole mechanism, and it was easy to do anti-clockwise. Right now, because I've swapped the parts over and my original one was kind of back to front, right now it's easy to do clockwise and hard to do anti-clockwise. Right, let's get back to the video, but bear that in mind what I just said on this voiceover bit. I wonder is that gonna do then? Well, there's only one way to find that. We'll pop it on the car and then see what's, uh, see what's happening. Right, I'm going to get some sort of clamp to try to push this thing onto here. You know, that weird nylon socket thing. Actually, maybe my mole grips will do. There we go. Well, that went on very easily, didn't it? Now, I'll uh, plug the battery back into the car. I hope this doesn't explode now. Just really don't know if it's on correct or not. Let's try it. All right, battery's on. I'm gonna sit in the car just in case it explodes in my face. So I'll turn the ignition on now. And it's gone to there. Right, let's have a look now. That's slow. Sounds okay, doesn't it? So fast. Okay, and now off. Ah, uh, did you see the way it parked? Yeah, hold on. Let's go fast. And off. Nice. But I feel safe to get out of the car. So it parks there. Let's go on to intermittent. So that's when it goes halfway up the screen. And now let's go off and it parks back there again. So I'm, that's where I need to put the windscreen wipers on low now when it's like that. But let's see if we can work out what's happening with it. So it goes like that. I wonder are we going to have full movement on the windscreen wipers now? Because there's no play there, is there? I just don't understand why we have this arm moving in and out. Is it just purely for park?
Well, obviously this one has lasted the test of time. It's just that you would think that that spring with that would be a weak spot that it would eventually wear through. Well, let's turn it off and let's see if we can see it click into place. Right, ready? So is that clicked into place now? Every single rotation it does that. You know what, I really don't know. Unless of course I've got it on back to front now because everything's been kind of, you know, this on the other one was upside down, wasn't it? Which would make more sense. Uh, maybe it's not supposed to click like that. Maybe it should be smooth the way it's going and only click like that when it kind of parks, goes the wrong way. Right, that there was where Vince had the big brain moment. Yes, it is on back to front. So, because of the clockwise thing and the anti-clockwise thing, with it being easy to do anti-clockwise, then that's where I need it to be spinning anti-clockwise easy, not resistance against that spring every single movement as it goes around. Because why would they design it like that? Surely they want to design it where the way it keeps moving is nice and easy. That's what I think anyway. So. This video is starting to drag a bit. So in this next part, what I need to do is I can't change over that nylon socket at the end. So if I could do that, then I would just change the arm over completely with the eBay one, but I can't do that. So now I put all the parts back onto the original eBay one. So it's the same as when I unpacked it from the center. And we know that it came off a working car, so it's going to be working as it is. It's just that annoyingly, I haven't got the nylon socket at the end, which is why I'm having so much bother. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to take off the whole mechanism from the eBay one, and then I'm going to put it on to my one. That way, then, it will be original. It's just that it will have the nylon socket at the end. Now, the only way I can see to do this is to physically open up the actual bracket on the mechanism on the arm itself so I can then take the mechanism out and then put it into my one. So that's what you see me doing in this part of the video here, just fast forwarded through. And then to get it kind of back into shape again, I bring it into my dad's shed and I put it in his vice. Now he's a carpenter, well he was a carpenter, not a metal worker, so he's got a wooden vice, not a metal one. So it's not ideal for stuff like this. I'm going to end up damaging the vice a bit, but I can do it enough to get it back into shape. And then I realize how it actually is supposed to come apart and go back together. So let's pick up this video again when I'm in my dad's shed. Excellent, I got it out. Now looking at this here, there is a groove. There is a groove here. So, is the idea, would that go on that way from the outside, I wonder? Do you know what I mean? Because there is a groove for that notch to go through. I wonder whether you would hammer it on from the outside, in which case then you don't have to bend it all out. Uh, you know what I mean? If it was like that, could we not hammer that in there and then when it's in it would twist into place wonder whether that's the idea of it let's try to straighten this up if i can Right, that's spinning lovely and freely in here now. So let me straighten up this one a little bit more. Now in theory, I should be able to put it in and whack this in from the outside, I think. So let's get this in here, like that. Put that vertical like this so it can pass through. This must be how it goes together. So now if I put this on here and get a hammer and tap this through, Are you going to go through or not? One second, I think I've just sort of fouled it out a little bit. 
So that was how you took it out to begin with. You just had to line up, you put it vertical like this, and then I suppose get a uh, screwdriver and try to knock out this nylon bush type locator thing. Are we not in? We are in right now. So, clockwise, it all moves around. Anti-clockwise, it doesn't. Have we still got movement here? Yes, we have still got movement there. I think that's okay. I don't think that's gonna cause any problems. Excellent, again, easy when you know how. Right, let's pop this on the car, and now let's see if it's making that annoying click every time it goes round. Maybe it will. Result. Right, so same protocol as before. I'm gonna hide in the car, just in case it all buckles and flies up. Just gonna get the uh, battery turned on. Right, here it goes. Right, hiding in the car, and slow. That's fast. Okay, that's the park position. And now I'm gonna to go to intermediate. Right, feel safe to get out of the car. Right, it's much more quiet. It's just making that tiny t -t noise, which is just those little springs on the inside. I think that's how it's designed to be. Well, I don't think I know, because that's how the part came. So it just shows you, it's uh, just because the car was, I think, a year earlier, it's a complete different design. But look, that's not fouling anywhere, is it? So the only thing it might foul on is when I put the lid on. Right, I'm happy with that becoming addicted to this white lithium grease. Well, hopefully that'll be enough. Right, okay, I am going to get the cover on and uh, see if it fouls. Excellent. So you can see now, well you probably didn't see, but before that used to move up and down because the bolt was too big going through it. Now there's no, uh, that's fine, that's not fouling at all. That's perfect. Right, so what I need to do is get this scuttle panel back on, connect up the little washers again, align the washer jets, get the wipers on. I've already got a replacement wiper for that, but I was thinking, I wonder if you were just to wrap some tin foil around it to sort of fill up that hole. That might squeeze it down enough to make it work. But anyway, I've got a replacement wiper now. So uh, yeah, let's do it now and let's see whether we have the full sweeping motion on the windscreen because we didn't have it before. It only came to around here and it left a big missing bit here. So let's see now that the play's gone from here, whether it will give the whole movement. So uh, I'm not gonna film it. I'll just start filming again when I've got it all ready to go. Right, I'm just waiting for those things to dry there. I had to put a bit of epoxy on them just because the chrome was coming away from the uh, black plastic on a couple of corners. So uh, I've moved my attention onto the windscreen wipers. Now, on a previous episode, a few people thought that maybe the windscreen wipers were the wrong size, and I also thought that, but I bought this one off eBay as an actual replacement. This is from a broken car, like a, uh, you know, a Rolls-Royce Silver Spirit that's been broken, or it might have been a Bentley, I'm not too sure. And uh, they are exactly the same. So this is my one here. You can see it's all shiny on the inside there. Hopefully you can see that. And this is the replacement one and you can still see that we have the splines on the inside of this one. I'm not sure whether you can see that or not, but I can. 
Uh, so uh, yeah, they're exactly the same, same size, same everything. Everything is the same. So these are definitely the original wipers from the car. And you can see there's some sort of wind deflector thing here to keep them onto the windscreen. So what I've done is I've just removed the wiper blade that was in here. Well, to be fair, it actually looked okay. But I've already put new ones on the ones that I had on there. So I've just put the new ones back on here. So yeah, we're nearly there now. I've got my scuttle panel back on. I just need to uh, put the pollen filters back in. Apparently these are the pollen filters in here. There's like metal gauze, but there's no foam or anything on them unless there's supposed to be foam underneath. As far as I can see, it's just a metal gauze, but I'm wondering whether there is foam that's supposed to go underneath that. We're nearly there. Right, so we're all finished now. It is the next day. I've had to be doing quite a little bit of adjusting and stuff on this. I think I've got it the best I can. Now, obviously it depends if the windscreen's wet or dry as to where the kind of parking situation is. But look, you can see there, they look kind of nice. They're in a, a nice position there. Now, beforehand, before I did any of the work, the thing is, when it was on intermittent wipe, it was really weird because it parks down here, which is great. But when it's on intermittent, it goes to here and then goes here to here to here here to here to here and it stops there and I thought it was really strange but anyway I watched another video on a silver spirit on a wiper problem the problem was that the wipers just kept on going and to me it looks on that one that the wipers were sat very high up the windscreen so look maybe that's just the way it's been designed it's just a bit weird because as far as I'm concerned it's fully in the view of the driver when it's on intermittent but the good news is it's now sweeping the whole windscreen and there is no as Hubnut would say because I was watching, the, looking at the comments in the last video and loads of people mentioned the Triangle of Doom. And then uh, I found Hubnut and he did a really nice video on a Rolls Royce. So uh, I think it was from a higher place or something. But anyway, it was uh, interesting. So this here is what he refers to as the Triangle of Doom. And beforehand, there was a massive Triangle of Doom. Now, look how small it is. Absolutely tiny. So that's really, really good news. So overall, I am happy, but I'm still not happy with the placement of the intermittent side of things. But it's like it was before. So I'm just going to take it as that is how it is designed to be, which looks a bit weird to me. Now, but everyone's going to say to me, just lower the wipers by another inch or so. But when it's moving i can't really afford to lower them much more i could maybe lower them a couple of centimeters more but uh, i wouldn't really want to go much lower because you see with the momentum of it it's just going to end up whacking this all the time and you can see beforehand that it was whacking this because we have a mark here and we also have a tiny little rust mark probably not going to see it just on the other side there where the wiper hits it so uh, yeah hopefully now it's not going to be whacking it now when it comes to the water side of things it's brilliant all the washers are working perfectly on the windscreen when it comes to here there's no leaks or anything which is fantastic this one works just amazingly well I'm not sure if i mentioned it early in the video or not but the reason it has a bigger motor and 10 millimeter piping I didn't work this out this is purely from the comments again so thank you to everybody that did comment this on that previous video it needs to be bigger piping and a bigger motor because on the windscreen you've got the wipers doing the cleaning the water's just there to aid it here there is no wipers so it has to act like a pressure washer so basically it's to force off water that's actually cleaning the headlights this one looks like it's working lovely it's hitting around this area here on this one here it seems to me to be going a little bit too high but yet it is hitting the uh, lights so again maybe a little bit of adjustment underneath i don't know i'm thinking though when you're driving though when you're driving i think the winds when you're driving would put the water more on the headlight so uh, yeah overall i am happy with it and the, the good news is the wipers really are cleaning very well now so uh, check this out but you are going to be disappointed at the intermittent thing because uh, to me it doesn't look right but uh, i'll tell you what let's start the car so I don't flatten the battery too much. Now check out the washer when I press this in here. Yeah, look at that. How nice is that? Nice and powerful. And look, full wipes going across. Let's put it onto slow and jump out the car. You can see now, look at that, going right the way across. It wasn't doing that before. So that's looking nice, isn't it? And no triangle of doom. Right, let's uh, put a bit more water on and go to fast. A bit more water and let's go to fast. And there you go. You can see now that that's going real good. But now check this out, when I go to intermittent, look at that, look where it sits itself, here. 
It's weird, isn't it, why it sits so high? I mean, don't get me wrong, the windscreen, there's still plenty of room to see out, but I don't like that at all. To me, that doesn't look like it's intended to be, but that's how my car was originally. And they look high up on the video that I've seen, so I'm just gonna take it as red that that's how it is. Weird though, isn't it? Anyway, hopefully most of the time, it will just be on slow or off. There you go, and you see it parks there nice. So when you do that and turn it off, it parks down nice. And also on intermittent, when you turn it off, it parks down nice. So uh, yeah, let me just show you the actual headlight washers work. And I get my dad to sit in the car. You have to have the lights on to do this. One of my lights at the front is not working. I thought in the previous episode, it might be some sort of parking light feature, but no, this one here, is no longer working but you can see that one's working there right i'm just going to get him to hit the uh hit the thing and you will see now that no longer does it go all the way to the tree it just cleans up this area here and a little bit of the hedge right so my dad's just in the car now check this out there you go can you see and again there so this one looks lovely this one's definitely going higher up but it is still hitting the, wind, uh, the actual headlight itself. So uh, I'm happy with that. Right, let's finish up the video. So there we have it. I got there eventually and I didn't have to spend much money, which is good. I just had to spend 10 pound on that part there. But to be fair, I did have to spend a lot of time. And if you were to put it into a garage, it would have been cheaper for them just to probably get, not a new part, but you know, like a, a working part of eBay rather than doing all the messing that I did. But I, uh, I kind of enjoyed it. You know what I mean, it's just my time. So uh, hopefully it makes for entertaining videos. I've got plenty more videos to do on this. And uh, I think this is gonna keep me in content for quite some time, which is good. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a massive thumbs up and I will see you all very soon. I'm not sure what the next video is gonna be. I think I might look at the seats. Uh, windows who knows there's still so much to look at and that's before we even get to things like the hydraulics and the leaks under the uh, engine and stuff like that so uh, yeah plenty to do but I'm still enjoying it which is the main thing so uh, yeah thank you so much for watching and I will see you all very soon take care everyone You don't have to be smart No need to dress up For me to see That you're a good man You're a good man A real good man When the wind blows Oh man.